Do you use a credit card? If you do, do you know what's the number one rule of using it? Always pay your bills on time. Do not accumulate debt or interest charges. Pay your bill on time. That's the only rule. But what happens when you can't pay the bills? What happens when the debt keeps mounting? Ask the United States of America. They're grappling with the problem as we speak. Credit card companies in the US are raking up losses. They're rising at the fastest pace since 2008. That's the year of the last major financial crisis, 2008. So losses of that level are significant. To understand why, we must answer three basic questions. What exactly are credit card losses? Why are Americans so in debt? And is this an indication of a bigger economic phenomenon? Let's answer them one by one. First of all, what are credit card losses? These losses happen when a borrower fails to repay the debt, as simple as that. Imagine you have a credit card, you paid for something using it, but now you don't have the money to repay this debt. You don't have assets at the bank or that the company can seize. So they write it off. That's what a credit card loss is. And in the United States, it is, it is rising at a record rate. Look at the numbers. Currently, credit card losses stand at 3.63%. Goldman Sachs expects them to rise to almost 5%. The peak is expected late next year or early 2025. On the other hand, America's credit debt is also at a record high. In August, it surpassed $1 trillion. $1 trillion of credit debt. It's a huge milestone, but not a desirable one. In 2022, an average American had around $5,900 in credit card debt. That number has now gone up to $6,500. $6, so clearly, a record number of Americans are borrowing, which brings us to our second question. Why are they unable to pay this debt? The answer is inflation. It's a big problem across the globe, and America is no different. Cost of living is at a record high. It has eroded the purchasing power of people. And when that happens, some people turn to credit to maintain a particular standard of living or to meet sudden unexpected expenses. They take credit. But a high reliance on credit cards also means that people will borrow more. They accumulate debt. Then there's interest rates. In the last one year, the US Federal Reserve has hiked interest rates multiple times, which means credit card interest rates also went up. So people had more debt, and they also had to pay a higher interest on it. The result was this, a record number of defaults. More and more people were unable to pay off their debt. Now here's something else you should know. Financial institutions carry such debt as assets on their balance sheets. They want more people to borrow. It works for them. They make money off it. But when these borrowers fail to pay back, the assets lose value. So they're written off. And this leads to losses. And when these losses become too high, regulators intervene. They make it harder for people to borrow money. But this measure is a double-edged sword. It can protect consumers and companies, but it can also stifle economic growth. Which brings us to the last question. Is this trend an indication of something bigger? Credit card losses are usually a worrying trend. They're associated with the financial crisis, like a recession. It's very rare to see such losses piling up at this rate, especially when an economy is not in recession. What does it say about the United States? Is a recession coming? Well, as of today, there are signs of resilience. Inflation has cooled off. The economic outlook is better. But it's still a long road ahead. Interest rates are at a 20-year high. So even if the US averts a recession this year, it's hard to say what the case will be in 2024. It could be a recession or a soft landing. And neither sounds good, especially in an election year.